vegetable garden. I mean, grew everything. Turnips, squash, zucchini, cucumbers, tomatoes, onions, lettuce, cabbages, watermelon, cantaloupe. Wow, that was the best cantaloupe, best watermelon, best onion and tomatoes out of the garden. Right, now why don't you take a breath? Potatoes. <gasps> Potato. Tomato? And why don't you take a breath and chill out for me and go to your Tina Turner zone? My Tina Turner zone? <laughs> I don't have a Tina Turner zone. Yum 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 And I need to cut that right quick so I can see. Uh, why? Why do you need to do that? Uh, I don't. Can you do it without glasses? Because you're. Yeah, I'm gonna. I'm not gonna wear them unless I really, really need them, and I want. You're gonna cause a reflection. I won't wear them. I promise. Layering light on your face. I promise I won't. But I need to have them ready when I do when I can. Well. Okay. Okay. I want you to take another breath. Mm-hmm. Really take a deep breath. Years. My head's cold. Okay. I want you to concentrate on me. Okay. Or you're going to talk to me. Okay. Tell me your name. Michael David Richardson. You know my name. Hold on. Why don't you tell me your name, your age, and where we are? Okay. My name is Michael David Richardson, and I am in Denison, Texas. And I am 50 years old as of November 14th, 1963. That's when I was born. Born. <laughs> What's your occupation? Uh, my occupation, I am a stylist, a hairdresser, makeup artist. Where? Extraordinaire. Where do you do that? I freelance at the moment, but I've worked all over the U.S. of A. with my lovely trade. When did you start becoming a stylist? Right out of beauty school, right out of high school. Uh, I went to beauty school probably the following summer I started. After high school? So 1981. I graduated in, actually 82. I graduated in 82, 1982 from J.J. Pierce. Um, are you also an artist besides just being a stylist? I, f I consider myself, I'd like to consider myself an artist, yes. My mother calls me autistic, but I'm, I like to think I'm artistic. <laughs> tell me your name again. Okay. And tell me your artist name. My name is Michael David Richardson, a.k.a. Sugar. That's my, what do you call it? My, uh, what do you call it? Uh, my, not my other half. <laughs> what do you call it? What's the word? Who's Sugar. Well, sugar is my alter ego. That's what it is. That's Describe what they. Her. That's what they usually say. But describe the difference between Michael and sugar. The difference between. Oh, what? Tell, tell me who Michael is. I'll say this: sugar is another facet of my personality, Michael. Okay. As and it's my. It's my alter ego, basically. I'm not egotistical per se, but it is a. It's a part of my alter ego. Tell me who Michael is and say Michael is, and then tell me. Do your best. Don't. Okay. Um, Michael is a loving, generous, kind-hearted human being from the South and f deeply a Southern at heart <laughs> all the way around. <laughs> uh, very kind, very shy to, an to, to a d degree, not an extreme. Used to be more in a, an extreme when I was younger totally shyly introverted um, and sugar my alter ego allowed me to um, find a voice and kind of come out fully in in all aspects of the word <laughs> describe sugar and say sugar um, sugar is also a very artistically not shy total extrovert socially uh, uh, outwardly Mm, secure human person, artistically, fashionably into music, and like, and I like to mix all that together. I mean, that's what that's what Sugar really started from. 
it was a big melting pot of music and fashion and hair and all that artistry part and a performance artist like I liked the performance artistry of it and what it is evolved. What you like about the performance art? Just the des describe, describe all of what it. Sugar's artistry looks like. Um, oh, <laughs> that's questionable. <laughs> But I hope that it looks um, intriguing, fascinating, funny as hell. What does it look like? I think it's beautiful. But describe it. Um, flashy, colorful, intriguing, graceful, uh, tell enlightening, me about, tell me about, funny, comedic. Tell me about a concept mm -hmm. with particularity that you've enjoyed what should, tell me what well, sugar, sugar started really basically from me having, um, you know, like you'll hear somebody say, uh, I'm a frustrated fashion designer. I'm a frustrated. And basically that's what sugar is composed of. All the frustratingly, you know, uh, things, all the frustrated things that I never did go to school for or just focus on one thing at a time, you know, even in hairdressing, when they uh, had salons that were compartmentalized, meaning there were only hairdressers that did hair cutting, there were only hairdressers that did hair cutting, cutting. Um, as, as expert as you can get in that field by doing those departmentalized, it's not as fun. You don't have, your, you don't have all of your irons in the fire. You're not able to touch all the facets of the art expression. That's the way sugar is with me. I like every bit of it okay. and even though I'm not great at all aspects of it I like to dip into all of it and okay. at my own expense really okay. really no one else is hopefully but you all know right. I'm, gonna, sorry, I'm gonna encourage you not to put your hands up because you cast a shadow across oh, okay. your face all right. and then I also encourage you <laughs> to go back and think for a second yeah. and tell you about a success I want you to tell me about a successful night mm -hmm. about the concept of putting sugar together particularly like try to think back overnight and tell me what you put together and tell me what you did but try to describe visually what you uh, did. there's several aha light bulb moments that really doesn't have to be a light bulb it just has to be vivid oh i can think of one right off hand go it was a really humbling experience and it was when i was really young and uh Old school queens really wanted to make a statement fashionably and however they could. And I never was a part of the pageant circuit per se. So my drag mother or people that embraced me as an artist said, you're going to have to find your own juice and what makes you tick And as an artist. And I was really lost because I knew I didn't have a voice and I knew I was shy, but sugar as a mask allowed me to let my inhibitions down and figure out what that was. I knew I loved fashion. I knew I collected Vogue magazines and GQ magazine just because I loved photography. I loved fashion models. I loved, you know, the com combination of the two. I loved designers and fashion period of any shape, form, creator color okay. of all kinds and so when I expressed myself as sugar I mean I get touched when I talk about it because I didn't have any other outlet to find a voice that was who my voice was all right and so uh, it evolved and got better and better but I was really confused about how to express that tell but that's what sugar was and that's how it was conceived basically tell me about the night <laughs> that you packed your bag getting ready for a night. What was in the bag and why was it? But tell me the items and try to describe. Mm, I can tell you. Go. It never, that, that didn't come till way later. And th I mean, and that was after I s started feeling secure about what I was really doing. My drag mother said to me, you know, you've got to get a gimmick because I didn't have any facial work done. I felt like I, my projection as an artist was real enough, but it really wasn't. <laughs> And so I had to do something that I felt comfortable with. And then it got to a point where I was balanced with it not being so much what people thought about me, but what I felt as an artist. I mean, that's how artists have to start somewhere and they have to feel secure in what they're projecting, especially when you're putting on a 
mask per se or if you're putting on a, a projection okay tell me about a night you got ready what items you got together why you did it but tell well describe, describe it i'm blind I from blind. the beginning uh but even before i did drag i always collected fabric i loved fabric I loved the way it moved. I loved the way it didn't move. I loved the way it flowed. I loved the way you could add to it. You could shape it, you know. Um, and I really didn't know how that was. I mean, I looked at, you know, uh, designers and designs on the runway. I always loved runway models because when I was coming out, there were they were had their own walk and they made the garments speak. Some of the really old Bob Mackie, you know, models and, where did um, you get the fabric? Where did tell me about a fabric? I used to where I could, my mother collected some of it. I would see it at thrift stores. I would stop at yard sales. Uh, people would give it to me after I started being known for coming out in public and <laughs> designing what I thought was what you know I was wearing. I literally went to a party one time and I was so bored and I knew the the uh, host of the party. And I went upstairs and he had the most beautiful shower curtain I'd ever seen in my life. What did it look like? It was silk and it was a sheer silk with gold embroidery. Now it was on the outside, it was in a powder room. It wasn't a heavily used bathroom, but he knew that and it was gorgeous. And it was on the outside of this plastic shower curtain. So he knew people were gonna go in there and powder their nose and powder their nose. <laughs> and that it would be seen, well, I just stared, I sat down on the toilet powdering my nose while my friend did whatever he was doing in the sink and I was just enthralled by the shower curtain <laughs> and I said I'm gonna wear that shower curtain right now I took it down and put it on and so you were in boy clothes oh no I was already in drag oh, okay. yeah I had already come in then that was my gimmick that became my gimmick because well what did your drag look like before you were it was okay, but, but it was it was it was it it was fifties uh, kooky was uh, it? Well, it may have been like yeah probably was it a, a wig. I think it was in a summertime and it was hot and that was probably part of the reason why I wanted to change because as we all know drag cannot is not always comfortable especially when you're in ladies' clothes because it's layered or whatever and even though I knew what to wear in the summer and the winter it, it was not always conducive to parties crowded or hot or somebody's air conditioner so i literally was hot or i was bored and i decided you know i'm just gonna put this shower curtain on just because so you were and already in drag and then i was already in drag i was what, painted like a blouse and a, like a, a i had on a white section. blouse and a white big circle skirt it was in the 80s and norma kamali was really big with these big <laughs> shoulder padded things and these big you know circle skirts because i loved grace that? would you wear that now? oh totally i'm like i wish i had that <laughs> because there are certain things that are classic and i lived for the classics i I loved drag queens that could pad and do drag and really look incredible at it. But no one ever did like, they would always do like uh, the dynasty collect, big shoulder padded beaded dresses or, or, or you know, pageant dresses and pageant stuff. I, did, I knew I wasn't a pageant girl. I wanted to do something different. And when I looked at the drag queens, I loved Lip Sinka because she was period drag. She did 40s, she did 50s. I mean, and she wasn't particularly an attractive young man, but her artistry and her drag made her the most beautiful thing I ever looked at. <laughs> uh, and it gave me chill bumps when I was turned on by these did entertainers. Did you see Lip Sinka in the 80s? No, my whole thing was going to Nouveau and opening up the magazines and books because we didn't have, the people that I admired and looked up to were in the drag circuit, pageant queens, and they were good, don't get me wrong, because I'm not trying to take away from their artistry at all, literally lived and loved and ate and dined and literally lived across the street from a lot of uh, Dion Martel, and I could go on with names and names, I mean a lot of really brilliant entertainers. And But I knew I wasn't as good as they were or felt insecure. And when my mother told me to do something and get my own juice and find my own niche, 
I was on a mission, and I had no idea what it was. Your mother encouraged you to do dragging? No, oh, not your drag mother. No, my drag mother, yeah. No, my mother had no clue what she's getting me involved in. Unbeknownst to her, she was a drag queen, and yeah, did inspire me. But I looked to Grace Kelly and, you know, uh, classic looking beauty like that Rita Hayworth in the 40s, uh, you know, okay. seriously. Um, all right, I want to, okay, so this is a portion where I'm going to keep trying to... Bring me back to what the question was. A little bit. But I get... Can yeah. I, don't get too self-conscious, mm -mm, but mm -mm. I'm going to try to get you to talk more about yourself. Mm, okay, right? yeah, yeah. But so, but so, so sometimes, so, so, so sometimes maybe you and I can develop something where um, I'm able to indicate that you veered off away from sugar mm -hmm. or Michael. Yeah. So that's where well. You're asking me where that started and how I packed, but I it all, I mean, I mean, but you, it all in, well, was inspired by that. I also that. want to tell you this is not easy. If I had no. someone shining up light yeah. in my face in a camera and wanted me to talk about myself, yeah. I wouldn't be able to do it very easily too. And I'd probably just I'm very comfortable with it, really. Okay, well then you got to get back on track to talking about sugar from okay. Michael because it's right. not easy. No, it isn't. So but, go, but I'm gonna I'm gonna start you back off. Okay. Um. Does sugar lip sync? You know, I never was a really big lip syncer. I'll be ever? perfectly honest. Yeah. What? What? Mm -hmm. <laughs> this is going to be funny. I always picked very soulful. Like I did Nona Hendrix, uh, Shaka Khan. I always loved black singers and all everybody. And I would do amateur shows because that's the only way I felt comfortable. Doing. I knew I wasn't a good lip syncer. I wasn't. And I knew that. And I would go to drag shows and look and watch and just like... <laughs> nearly tear up and get chill bumps watching and i always knew that i wasn't going to do that unless i was as good as they were and so i didn't pursue lip syncing so much i wanted to find another niche and create another form of drag what is that other form that other form is the artistry of costume and the artistry of visual um there were uh queens that were coming out of new york well, RuPaul was one and Lip Sinka was one. Even though she would pantomime, uh, to me, half of her entertainment was doing period drag and getting in drag and her visuals were breathtaking to me. The way she would look like uh, Lucy Ricardo in that 50s outfit or Joan Crawford with the shoulder pads okay. and that suit. Or, I mean, and that is not easy to do. And for me, um, I would look. To, I used to do hair and makeup in, uh, as Sugar and Michael, and I would look at the models and I would look at what was around me in Dallas because I wanted to bring it home. I, there, all I had to look to were Queens, Lip Sinka, RuPaul, that were from New York City, uh, and I had to look at them. You know, Tula, who was a sex change, who was in Free Your Eyes Only, who was from London. Uh, you know, I was mesmerized by their beauty, but you know, it's like, it was gonna be a long, hard road for me to look that real and that beautiful and be able to lip sync on top of it. But uh, I started finding my niche, standing in the mirror with all of my insecurities and taking fabric that I had collected and cutting it and shaping it and winding it into and what? tying it into, into an evening gown or a two-piece ensemble that looked and felt gorgeous. How? Uh, How did it look and feel? Because it looked and felt good on my body. It looked and, because I had an effeminate body. I was thin, I was shapely. Uh, and I, the more I could let, make it look real, I took that as my advantage because I was. I was always a skinny mini and so, uh, when I got a little bit of facial work done, then that's what I could emulate. I could emulate high fashion couture models because I was tall and skinny, and that's what I had to uh, capitalize on, basically. Um, I had gorgeous legs, not so much anymore, but you know, I knew I had long legs and I knew that, but, but that was gonna be hell exposing them because you know, you had to shave them. I wasn't gonna have a hairy leg, man leg in, in an evening gown because that's just not what you do. So 
because that wasn't pageantry, I knew that I was going to be taking chances and putting myself out there on a limb as sugar to expose that feminine side of me. But that had to be done. And those were the conscious decisions that I decided I was going to make. Because if I was going to do something wholeheartedly, then I wanted to do it really, really well. And I felt like I did. Okay. And eventually it did get attention.